Hello TESOL students and YouTube subscribers. This is just a quick video to show a very important skill, how to turn a video into a GIF. Now if you are in the SMU TESOL program, you can consider this part of your TOTE curriculum. It's one more tool you can use uh, for online teaching. All right, so what we're starting with is our finished product here, which I've zoomed in to make it nice and big. This was a GIF that I created from a movie, from a video, uh, to show our students how to log into a classroom on Google Classroom. So uh, the reason GIF seemed like an appropriate format is I didn't necessarily need them watching a video, watching a long video. This is kind of a simple procedure, so this just uh, what a GIF will do is it will continue cycling through the frame so students can just kind of glance at it and understand uh, quite quickly. Alright, so now how I did this was I went, first of all I went into uh, Google Classroom as a student. So I logged in as a student and I recorded using Google Meet. Now Google Meet is not ideal, but it is fast. So uh, how you do that is you simply go to meet.google.com, new meeting, start an instant meeting, and there it is, okay? And so I, let it, I allow it to use my microphone, allow it to use my camera, uh, etc. In this case, I'm gonna block, uh, just because I didn't <laughs> want it to interfere with this recording. Uh, but the next thing I do is I go down to this, the three dots and I click record meeting and I share my screen and in that case it was something like this. Okay, so then I end up with a screen like this uh, to record the video. Uh, at the end, I would just say, you know, stop sharing, stop recording um, and I hang up. And what that's going to do is it's going to send a recording of that video directly to my email. So as I mentioned, Google Meet recordings are very fast. Uh, so then I take that email of the recording, I download the recording, and I end up with something like this, uh, which you can see in this center square. And I went to easygif.com with my video. It's a very useful website. And I, I just went to video to GIF, which is this tab here, and I was prompted to upload my video. So now what we have is uh, we want to turn this into a GIF. Now very importantly, I've already put 23 here, which is the end of this video. As you can see, it ends at 23 seconds. This website wants to make a, a short and fast GIF, so the default is like five seconds, so you need to change that time. Okay, and so I just convert that to GIF, and immediately I have this output which is already in GIF format, which is great. However, there are some problems with this. Because I used Google Meet for the fast recording, I know there's gonna be a lot of extra space on the sides. So I've gone to Crop now, to make it smaller, and I want my students to see the plus sign, and I want them to see the join sign, so it's, I need that top corner, but I don't need all this black. So I'm just gonna crop, 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 make that a bit smaller, and then instantly crop the image and see where we are. Now that looks a lot better but I might want to clean it up a little bit because I have that black line on the top. I'm going to be picky here. So let's make that black line a little bit less. Hopefully it'll disappear. Crop that image. Boom. There's a nice little uh, cropped GIF. But I'm not done because it's kind of small, so I, I want students to be able to see the important information like my instructions and the class code. So I'm going to add some text. So I click on Write. Now this is a beautiful feature because it allows you to enter your annotations 
by frame. And if you scroll down, there are a lot of frames here. So the first thing I want to say is something like, uh, click the plus sign to join a class with a little caret to point at it. I know the font size is rather, rather large in this case to fit all that there, so I'm gonna bring it down to about 22. Um, let's make blue color. The blue color I choose for everything because I just think it's very visible. It's a nice color. Now I don't need it for the whole frame one to the end. So what I wanna do is I wanna scroll down and find where that screen becomes a different screen. So right around here, slide 31. Okay, so I'm going to say frame one to 31 and set. Boom. So now it gives me this text, but it's in the wrong place. Luckily I can just move it up and I want it to point at that little plus sign there. It's very small, but I know where it is, okay? So click there to join a class. And I click set again just to be safe. I don't know if you need to click set twice. Just try. Okay, scrolling down here. Now I have a different screen. I think the most important information I need here is the class code because I want to show students how to log into their Google Classroom. And let's say the class code was ABC123 LMNO. And that's all it's going to let me do. So I click set. Ah, but I want to make sure that I'm blue. That's not blue. Let's say blue 32 or even bigger. Set right about there is fine. Okay, now I, again, I don't need it to go all the way to the end. So I'm gonna find where this screen changes by scrolling down. It's a lot of frames, but these frames go by very quickly. So right around slide 114 will be the last that we want to see that code. Scrolling all the way back up. 114 is the number to remember. That's when the screen changes and I'm clicking set again. All right, now there's one other bit of text I like to include here and that is just the instruction for them to click join. Now they can only do that when the button becomes that dark blue color right around here. Okay, slide 74. So I want to say click join with a little caret to point to the button. Uh, same thing, I can make this font size a lot bigger and I want to be blue. Let me just move myself out of the way. So I can see, there we go, blue and 40 to, what was our magic number, 114? Oops, 114 is the end, and the first frame is 74, and I'm going to click set. Let's just make sure that's pointing to the button. And clicking set again just to be safe. So now what I should have is a, basically a finished GIF. So if I scroll all the way to the bottom, after all of these frames, I'm gonna have the option to create my GIF. Now, I did say almost because it's not gonna be perfect. When we see our GIF, that looks pretty good. It looks really clear. You can see all the important information, but it's just a little bit slow. So what we can do is we can speed that up using Easy GIF very simply. I just clicked on the speed, little, little stopwatch icon, and it's gonna suggest 150% of the current speed, and I think that's that's pretty good. All right, so we're gonna change speed. It's about right. Now the output should appear in a matter of seconds. 
and that's the GIF that we can post for the students to see. Let's try again. Change speed. There we go. It was my problem. I didn't click it well enough. So as you can see, as we process, we can see what the process has led to. You can see the entire process in the GIF itself. We're just going to go ahead and save that. We're going to show it in a folder. Uh, and we're going to call it rename. Okay. Oh my.